Breaking down the news, ladies and gentlemen, Jamaicans have spoken. A majority, matter of fact, 82% of Jamaicans say that dance hall has contributed to the uprising and violence in the beautiful island of Jamaica. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rasta Far Right Soldier. Greetings, greetings, and salutations to all nations. Ladies and gentlemen, you know I'm Rasta Far Right Soldier of Deep Roots yes, TV. And if this is your first time tuning in, I'm asking you, hit that red subscribe button. We're going to have a great relationship, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Dance hall, dance hall. The Jamaican popular genre that has taken the world by storm. But a cumulative 82% of all Jamaicans believe that the connection between dance hall music and the incidents of crime and the recent rise of murder, violent crimes in Jamaica, according to a recent Don Anderson poll conducted in July, has revealed that 82% of the Jamaicans taking the poll believe that the dance hall music is connected. And we're going to talk about this. This is something that we have been waiting on. We have been avoiding Many DJs and artists has claimed that they believe that dance hall now cause no rising violent. But the poll which was commissioned by Jamaican Gleaner revealed that 41% of the respondents believe that dance hall music play a very big role in influencing criminal behavior. While 30% of persons believe that the dance hall have somewhat of an impact. You hear that? So they're saying that 40% of the people that were polled saying that yes, dance hall do impact the rise in crime in Jamaica. And another 30% say it's somewhat impacted. An additional 11% of the 1113 respondents said that dance hall influenced criminal behavior only a little bit, while another 11% said that not at all. And 7% of the respondents said they were not sure. Me not know where them come from. Listen to me, my people. Music teaches the people. So when Bob Marley is singing, get up, stand up, you see the people them reacting in a different way. But when cartel or bounty singing people for dead, you see the people them reacting in a different way. Just put on two simple contrasts Barris Hammond, um, Skeng, and then see the difference in the mood of the people. So you can't tell me some music don't influence the people. My granny say you fit pick the beam out of you, yai, before you talk about the next one and the next person, yai. And me I pick it out of Jamaican, yai, right now. The entertainers and the entertaining industry are responsible. Now, the newspaper report, Don Anderson has said, that said that the dominant view were held primarily by older persons rather than younger persons age of 18 to 24 as younger Jamaicans were less convinced that there were a direct connection. However, Professor Don Hope, excuse me, Donna Hope, a lecturer of the University of West Indies has taken issue with how the poll question was framed. The outcome of the question that is already laid in to go to more people are going to give a positive response to say yes in a various way, Hope said. Now, for example, she said, so yes, very much, yes, what, somewhat, yes, only a little yes. So already the question is steered towards and structured towards going to have a positive response. She said the decision on this they are discussing whether that dance or music influence the criminal behavior has been a hot topic for debate, especially over the last two years, particularly since the rise of chop music and the arrest of several prominent dance hall musicians in the industry. In April last year, down sound producer and reggae sunfest market strategist Cardell Scatterbarrel Deer to, the, to, to Daniel his way into the dance hall scene by saying the unlikely 
mention by saying musician compatriots like Sham and Bounty Killer and declare that the music has influence and it is a hypocritical position for them to disagree. Scatter commented that come in response to the article written by head of reggae studio studies unit at the University of West Indies, Dr. Sanja Stanley Near, who poised and posed that the study needed to be done to address whether or not there is a link between dance and music and Jamaican violence. Ladies and gentlemen, music is part of our culture. Your culture is your way of life. You know what I mean? I said the way you live. What you eat, what you drink, what you your dance, you know, your meds, your clothes, your lifestyle. So you cannot tell me that the dominant dance or music for the ghetto people does not influence the violence that is plaguing the ghetto people. Now, Dr. Nia had said, among other things, that while there have been some investigation, no definite study has yet been done to assert whether there is a correlation between the crime in Jamaica and the popular music produced and consumed. But Scatter, who had long admitted that the music influenced violence behavior, have rubbished her argument inferring that from his standpoint, academic study is not needed. The psychological impact of the music, positive or negative on the people, is quite evident. I agree with Scatter. Bob Marley sang three little birds to make a positive uplifting impact on the world, and the song does exactly that. To think that the hardcore dance hall does not influence the mindset in a negative way is ridiculous. The dance hall producer had argued, Scatter had argued that while Jamaicans like himself enjoy the music and are not stupid enough to go and shoot someone because he's written a song in a way that he might, you know, call his name or disrespect him. The musician and position also need to understand that they live on an island where crime has taken over and affects everyone. Scatter had also reiterated that his stance on this producer and artist as citizen, the country, and the loyalty of their fans, and in the interest of the rest of the general population, are to muster the courage to help curtail the violence through their lyrics. Additionally, he said that due to the fact that Jamaican political leaders has demonstrated that they are not only unreliable but extremely lackadaisical, artists should use their influence in a positive manner to better the young people who look up to them. A real tax catabarel asset. You are going to these artists that are paid by white people that are paid to put out destructive music to destroy the framework of humanity which is the family which is our brothers and sisters are being paid by the ex-slave master children to create a genocidical a genocide Nation, you hear them all name themselves genocide. People, people, people. What these artists are, they are agents of evil, ladies and gentlemen. Like me, I said, you cannot think that the music that the people them are listening to. If you look in any nation, all America in a the ghetto, the black people them listen to Biggie Smalls and Toast Pack. And Wagwan, pay a murder in the black community. So the music that we do listen to, it does, does influence the people. Scatter said that until Jamaican politicians change from their self-serving ways, it is imperative that the rest of the nation rise to the occasion and help their fellow countrymen and women who have been left to the mercy of of the murderers and the violent producer. A month later, self-proclaimed dancehall defender Senator Damien Carford had insisted that there was no link between crime and violent dancehall song. Of course, him is a lawyer who defend the murderer 
artist them. And the more violent and crime we go on, and the more client him have. Him no longer talk bad about him number one clients, which are the dancehall artists, which are the people them will commit crime after coming from a dancehall that was revved up by the music that was being perpetuated and rained on them. Violence that was flinging to them through the tweeter and the mid-range and the bass. Now, the Senator Damian Crawford in a statement which contrasted one made earlier by the PMP colleague, Councillor Michelle Trope, that violent dancehall music was driving up the crime rate and assertion by the Prime Minister Andrew Holness that there was a casual relationship between murder music and the island's murder rate. And that is obvious. You would have to be a straight dodo, an empty shell, like this fake Rasta lawyer here, our, our councilman, Damien Crawford. You are going to, he will have to be a straight empty shell, Senator Crawford, to say that music does not influence people. And if we are perpetuating, proliferating, producing, consuming, and duplicating pure violent music. Don't you think that the people them, the violence all grew up on the people them? Now Crawford argued that the criminals already have evil intention there in their heart and were not influenced by the music to engage in the heinous act. And the majority of the people who listen to these tracks never engage in crime. I do agree that people do have evil in them but when you have something urging them on, and especially when people don't have no daddy, they suffering from ADD, ain't no daddy at home, men are depressed. Nevertheless, he said that criminal ways are going to be criminal ways, because the criminal may gravitate to violent music. It was only because that the criminals had a criminal intention already. You hear the talk where the man has said, the counselor is stripping. Other persons like myself listen to the music and gravitate to it. But we don't gravitate to the murder. We gravitate to the metaphor and the rhythms and stuff like that. So the aspect of the music in being criminal gravitated is because the criminals were criminal minds already. The former UT Glide president said, in advance, his argument, Crawford had pointed out that the annual murder rate averaged about 1,700, even there were 1,700 killers, they were influenced by music. No. Then there will still be 2.7 people who were not murderers or influenced by the music. This, this counselor is a dodo head. What we are saying is that the music increased the probability and the murder rate. And you're denying it. You are a criminal yourself just for denying it. Inside Crime 2020 Homicide Roundup Report on Latin America and Caribbean relieved that Jamaica had the region highest homicide rate at 46.5 per 100,000 people, which record killing of 1,301 in 2020. The United Nations Consider any homicide rate of 10% of 100,000 to be above and an epidemic, which effectively means that Jamaica has long been in a crisis situation. In July last year, Dance Hall Queen Carleen, in the bemoaning Jamaican criminal violence rate, which she said that she was keeping down the island, it was keeping down the island, also addressing the matter. Noting that in an interview that artists with overly violent lyrics might be unwittingly serving these as a fold of impersonability to impress the youth to carry out deviant acts. I mean, even the dancehall queen know in lamenting the assessment of the murder, the lyrics that are being put out in the dancehall, Carlene says, that she have not, she had noted that the contrary of the views of some of the artists is simplicity, 
and observe to the view that these type of songs are an expression of freedom of speech. The butterfly dancer creator had also said that while parents has the responsibility to train their children and to role model to them, artists, other public figures still have the duty and the responsibility to watch the utterance of the violent laced music in the dance hall environment because over time it becomes overt, covert, and it impacts vulnerable young people. And that should be one of the entertainer's role. Outside of dance hall crime chatter, expert in psychology and psychiatry have attributed the level of violence in Jamaica not to the music, but the fact that the island has a large number of psychopaths and sociopaths. In February of 2020, government senior and consultant psychiatrist doctor suffering long more after recounting some barbaric act of violence against children and women in Jamaica society had declared that there are sociopaths and psychopaths amongst us during her contribution to the state of nation debate in the upper house. Dr. Longmore had told the government that it was time to put funding behind mental health. She had also urged through an argument in the Jamaican Council before it to enroll the service of some criminal psychologists in their investigations. Studies conducted by the late emitting psychologist professor Frederick Hicklin on antisocial behavior amongst them a joint one with Dr. Greg Gregory Godfrey, excuse me, Walcott in 2013 titled Personality Disorder in Convicted Jamaican Murderers concluded that antisocial personality disorder as an ethologue are pre prevalent of the homicidal violence representing a major public health problem in the contemporary Jamaica. The study found that 51% of murderers were diagnosed having an anti-soldier and an inadequate personality and two-thirds were illiterate or barely liter literate. Professor Hicklin had also conducted another joint study titled Population Prevalence of Personality Disorder in Jamaica in collaboration with clinical psychologist Vanessa Paisley in 2011, which revealed that not only was personality disorder prevalent in the island, but that nearly one million adult Jamaicans suffer from the personality disorder and the island's high crime rate was linked to mental health. The two clinicians had also noted that the rate of personality disorder approximately 40% in Jamaica population is markedly higher than the international identified rate of 6 to 15. So Jamaica have 40% of personality disorder which is a prerequisite for these heinous murderous crime. You are going to Heinous and murderous extrapolating these findings to our society. There is no wonder about high rate of murder and violence, rape and other sexual atrocity that crimes such as theft and predatory larceny that are critical and cryptic of society. It cripples the society that two research noted that a joint letter to the Gleaner at that time Professor Hickley had also said that if the findings do not influence public policy, then we are doomed to repeating the same mistake of the last hundred years or since independence as many of the crime strategy employed by the social force have failed. As this scientific aspect of the crime problem has gone unaddressed, in introspection, the legislation will not work. It will not solve the problem. 
we will continue to fail, Hicklin Lee said. Ladies and gentlemen, this is spot on. Now, you hear what the people them are saying. They're saying that we are sociopaths in Jamaica. Study conducted shows that we are psychopaths. A book titled The Personality Disorder in, Con uh, in Convicted Jamaican Murderers, Dr. Godfrey or Jeffrey Walcott in 2013. Yeah, Dr. Jeffrey Walcott and Frederick Hicklin saying that the antisocial behavior of Jamaicans are indications of sociopathical action. Now, I am not going to deny that we do have sociopaths because I've been telling the people them that Jamaicans, the island of Jamaica have serial killers, serial rapists, serial murderers, serial kidnappers, a PS serial, them I give you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I do agree that there are many sociopaths that are doing music. Listen to the music that they're doing. Look at the mannerism and the attitude. Them don't care. Them no care. Look how many Jamaican artists are currently surging murder charges or life sentence. In the recent five years, you could name at least five. And the proliferation of their mindset through the music over the airways on the internet continue the erosion of the young children. And it is adults' responsibility to protect the innocence of children. And we have failed our children. We have failed our children's future. And we have cowardly shut our mouth and backed ourselves into a corner. But when the right time come, your man will suffer. Marcus tell us, say, yo, we're not going to know ourselves till we're back against the wall. And here we are. You can't even talk to your grandchildren. You are going to much less your children. And we are talking about sweet, sweet Jamaica. Where the crime rate continue to outweigh the national average. You are going to Where we are the number one producer of music almost every year. Check the Guinness Book of World Record. We record music like nothing. We are great entertainers. But we proliferate negativity and absorb negativity like a sponge. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm doing this because I always wanted to make a little video about the dance hall and the violence to try to get the people to understand the damage and the selfishness of a lot of these artists. Because of what they're doing is they're just looking for self-fame while they erode the moral fabric of the youths and destroy the future of the fruits. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rastafari, soldier of Deep Roots TV, reporting live here in the studio, making the connection between the mental state of mind of Jamaicans and the violent crime. The music teach the people, and if the music is constantly violent, then the people, some will absorb the violence through the music. And get motivated or influenced. And that's all I'm saying. You cannot say the music don't influence the people. There's always going to be violent music. But don't disassociate the cultural aspect. Because murder one is part of black culture. Anyway, because we do not value our lives. I'm more life, ladies and gentlemen. I'm more joy. I'm more happiness. I'm Rastafari soldier here of Deep Roots TV. Jamaican dance hall. The people, them make a connection. 
82% in accordance with the Anderson poll shows that 82% cumulatively Jamaicans believe that the dance hall violent lyrics have a influence on the murder rate and the violence that's in my beautiful island of Jamaica, ladies and gentlemen. Leave your comment if you agree. Even if you don't agree, leave your comment. And if you have an opinion where we can do to improve Jamaica or lower the crime, leave it. Tell me what's on your mind. More life, more joy, more happiness. You be blessed. Hello, my name is Ashina and welcome to the Make sure to tune in in the air every time.